I'm standing here on the shores of Lake Erie, and behind me is the state of Ohio and the Cuyahoga River. And that river and this lake share a fascinating history and an uncertain future. You see, in 1969, the Cuyahoga River, which feeds into Lake Erie, caught fire. Not for the first time, but for the 13th time. Let that sink in for a second. A body of water so polluted, it literally ignited. The flames rose five stories high, devouring two railroad bridges. This wasn't just an environmental disaster. It was a wake-up call that would forever change North America's relationship with its natural resources. And today, Lake Erie supports a billion-dollar fishing industry and provides drinking water to 11 million people. But the journey from a dead lake to a vital ecosystem wasn't inevitable. It's a story of destruction, awakening, and recovery. And this holds crucial lessons for environmental challenges we face today. And as always, this is Ali, and welcome back to Urban Atlas. To truly understand Lake Erie's environmental story, we need to appreciate its unique geography. Lake Erie is the fourth largest of the Great Lakes by surface area, covering approximately 9,940 square miles, or 25,000 square kilometers, roughly the size of Vermont. It has a shoreline of approximately 800 miles or 1,300 kilometers, which spans four U.S. states and one Canadian province. But it's what makes Lake Erie different from its sister lakes that made it both ecologically productive and environmentally vulnerable. While Lake Superior reaches depths of over 1,300 feet, Lake Erie averages just 62 feet deep and only 24 at its western basin. And this shallow profile means Erie warms quickly and supports abundant life. But it also means pollutants concentrate more easily and aren't diluted in the vast volumes of water. Perhaps most critically, Lake Erie has the largest drainage basin relative to its size of any great lake. The lake receives water from a 22,000 square miles or 58,000 square kilometers watershed, home to major agricultural regions, urban centers, and industrial zones. In practical terms, this means that activities affecting water quality across parts of Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, and Ontario all ultimately impact Lake Erie. Interestingly, Erie receives not just water from its own basin, but also the accumulated outflows from Lake Superior, Michigan, and Huron. This position makes it a collective point for pollutants from the entire Upper Great Lakes system. The lake's east-west orientation also exposes it to prevailing winds, creating a significant amount of waves. And while this natural stirring helps oxygenate the water, it also means sediment-bound pollutants are frequently resuspended. And these geographic features combined to make Lake Erie one of the most naturally productive Great Lakes. However, it's also the most susceptible to human-caused degradation, a vulnerability we failed to recognize until it was almost too late. You see, the story of Lake Erie's degradation is a perfect storm of industrial waste, agricultural runoff, sewage mismanagement, and ecological ignorance. By the mid-20th century, Lake Erie was receiving waste from steel mills in Cleveland and other industrial centers. The lake was also receiving raw, untreated sewage, as well as agricultural-based fertilizer runoff. Chemical plants released organic compounds and PCBs into the lake while millions of homes released detergents containing phosphates right into the lake. The phosphorus from detergents and fertilizers triggered massive algal blooms. And when these algae died, their decomposition consumed oxygen, creating vast dead zones where fish couldn't survive. Astonishingly, by the 1960s, Lake Erie was declared dead by many scientists and media outlets. The evidence was impossible to ignore. Beaches were closed due to bacterial contamination. Drinking water tasted of chemical and algae, and shorelines were covered in sludge and algal mats. Then came the infamous Cuyahoga River Fire of 1969. Though not the first time the river had caught fire, this incident captured national attention, becoming a powerful symbol of environmental neglect. And because of this, Lake Erie had become the poster child for environmental catastrophe. But sometimes things have to get worse before they can get better. You see, the Cuyahoga River fire occurred at a pivotal moment in American history. 
the environmental movement was gaining momentum, with Rachel Carson's Silent Spring published earlier that decade, bringing ecological concerns into public consciousness. The lake's degradation and the burning river became powerful symbols. Time magazine featured the burning river in a story about America's environmental crisis, and these images shocked the nation and galvanized public opinion. In 1970, the first Earth Day brought 20 million Americans onto the streets, and at that time, this was the largest demonstration in American history. Lake Erie featured prominently in these protests, and these protests helped create the Environmental Protection Agency in 1970 and create the Clean Water Act of 1972. This also helped create the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement between the US and Canada, which focused on reducing phosphorus into the lake. And the stage was now set for one of America's greatest environmental comeback stories. Lake Erie's recovery began with addressing the most obvious pollutants. Phosphorus loads from municipal sources dropped by over 80% between 1972 and 1987, after wastewater treatment plants were upgraded and phosphates were removed from detergents. Industrial pollution decreased dramatically as factories installed water treatment technologies and regulatory agencies monitored compliance. The visible signs of pollution, oil slicks, floating debris, and foul odors gradually diminished. And then, by the mid-1980s, dissolved oxygen levels had improved significantly. Native fish populations began to recover, with walleye making a particularly impressive comeback. Sport fishing, once devastated, returned as a major economic driver for coastal communities. Restoration efforts expanded beyond just water quality. Wetlands, nature's water filters which had been drained for development, began to be protected and restored. Shoreline habitats were rehabilitated to support native species as well. While Lake Erie is on the road to recovery, it still faces challenges. Agricultural runoff loaded with fertilizers continues to cause harmful algal blooms. Most notably in 2014 when Toledo's water supply was temporarily shut down due to toxic algae. Climate change introduces new variables, with warming waters potentially favoring invasive species and harmful algae. Microplastics represent an emerging threat we're only beginning to understand. Lake Erie's story offers powerful lessons for environmental challenges we face today. Firstly, ecosystems can recover if we give them the chance. Secondly, environmental regulations work. The Clean Water Act and the other measures of the 1970s made tangible, measurable improvements in water quality. Economic growth continued despite dire predictions from regulation opponents. And thirdly, environmental health and economic prosperity are not opposing forces. Today, Lake Erie supports a fishing industry worth over a billion dollars annually. Tourism at Lake Erie also generates over a billion dollars annually for coastal communities. Cleaner Lake Erie means cleaner drinking water for millions of people. And today, as work continues to clean up the lake, efforts focus on advanced agricultural techniques to reduce fertilizer runoff, green infrastructure in urban areas to control stormwater, invasive species management, and citizen science and monitoring for public education. And thus, what happened with Lake Erie should give us hope for addressing even bigger environmental challenges. It shows that when we combine scientific understanding, political will, and public engagement, we can solve seemingly insurmountable problems. Lake Erie's journey from pristine wilderness to industrial wasteland, the recovering ecosystem mirrors our own evolving relationship with the natural world. We've moved from exploitation without thought of consequences to recognition of our impacts to efforts at restoration and coexistence. The lake that once burned now sustains millions of people and countless species. It's a testament to nature's resilience and humanity's capacity to learn, to change course, and to heal the damage we've caused. As we face even greater environmental challenges in the decades ahead, Lake Erie's revival offers both a warning and a promise. We have the power to destroy our natural treasures, but we also have the power to save them. The choice, as always, remains ours. And as always, if you like content like this, remember to subscribe to my channel. I make videos like this almost every week. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.